Hi, I'm David Burr from O3B Networks. I'm here today talking about the value of low latency. O3B has launched a different kind of satellite network. Traditional geostationary satellites are out at 36,000 kilometers. O3B has launched a constellation of satellites at 8,000 kilometers. This allows us to reduce the cost of deploying the network, but the reduced distance also reduces delay and improves the quality of all sorts of voice and data services. Does this really matter? In fact, the delay, how instantaneous things are, influences the way we perceive them. Things that happen with sub-second immediacy, 100 to 200 milliseconds, perceived to be immediate. After that, we begin to sense the delay up to about a second. Now it becomes annoying. Uh, and as the, the delay increases from that, we lose patience, our, our mind begins to wander. Once things get to 10 seconds, if you're waiting 10 seconds for a web page to load, you've probably given up. You've clicked the refresh button, you've moved on to a different page. It, it does influence the way we, we see things on the internet uh, and the quality of services. What I'm going to do today is show you a demonstration network. What we have set up is two simulators, one simulating the geostationary delay and the other simulating the MEO delay of O3B, connected up to PCs and phones to show the different applications. So we'll be doing most of the demonstrations using the Google Chrome web browser. This is the, the standard browser. There, is, there are two things that I have special today in the upper right. There's a little stopwatch that shows the, the time that the page loads. And the little green square is a, a cache blocker. I've disabled the cache on the PCs, so what we see is the performance of the satellite link, not the performance of the cache. So latency impacts data services in two ways. First, a packet takes longer to go from one end to the other and return. So this is going to impact all interactive services where you're waiting for a response from the other end. The other is the way that delay impacts the widely used TCP protocol. This impacts the speed that can be achieved by different services. The most common service that people use is obviously web browsing, going to different surfing to different sites. I'm going to use the, the New York Times here for this demonstration to show you how fast the pages load. I'm going to refresh the, the Geo and then the O3B link. New York Times is commonly used for this kind of test because it's a large, complex page. You have lots of frames, you have JPEGs, graphics that are there, not only in the, the part of the screen that you see, but below, below that. In the upper right, you see that even though I start started the geo screen first, the O3B version has loaded fastest. Typically what we see is about a three times, it takes three times as long over geo than it does over O3B, directly proportional to the, the delay. The more complex the page is, the, the greater the value of latency. And what we see is that web pages are getting more complex, right? Five years ago, the average web page might have been six, six or 700 kilobits. Today, it's well over a meg, and it's getting faster. More JPEGs, more banner ads. We're starting to see video ads inserted. All of these make pages bigger, and it's going to make this effect even more noticeable. So you can see that the pages load much faster over O3B than over Geo. Does that really matter? Actually, a lot of studies have been done showing the impact of small delays. Just one second of additional delay reduces the, the number of web pages, transactions that are completed, the number of searches, how long a user stays online. A lot of research has been done by companies like Google and Amazon, whose revenues depend on users being satisfied and providing them more business. The other impact of latency is on the TCP protocol. TCP is used for just about every kind of web service, whether it's browsing, file downloads. TCP uses an acknowledgement mechanism. <clears throat> we'll only send a certain number of, of packets before it stops and waits for an acknowledgement to receive, be received. The longer the delay over the link, the more time that it spends waiting for that acknowledgement and not sending data. So the lower delay link will, will achieve a higher data rate using TCP. This slide shows the delay of O3B and of Geo on the TCP protocol. And you see that O3B achieves about three times the data rate that Geo does. And this is going to speed up movie downloads, file downloads, your Windows updates, all sorts of things that are getting downloaded. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to show downloading a, a large file. This is an Ubuntu distribution, so it's a, a Linux. It's about a 700 meg file. Once again, I'm going to start the, the Geo service first and then start the O3B here on the bottom. Okay. Well, you'll notice on the lower right of the screen we have a little graph showing you how fast the download is taking place and in the lower left you see a timer it shows in Windows how long this is taking to download. And you can see from the speed of the two graphs you're getting much more throughput over the O3B link because the delay is less and TCP is able to send more data over the link. The next thing I'm going to demonstrate is the impact of latency on video services. It used to be that video, streaming video, came over UDP. But things have changed and most streaming video now comes over either Flash or HTML5. This includes sites like YouTube and Hulu uh, have all moved to these protocols. These run over TCP and they're impacted by all the same limitations that we just went through. The first site that I'm going to go to is a, is a flash streaming. This happens to be Ariane Space and we're going to watch a video of O3B's first satellite launch. Okay. Now this is a fixed rate flash. Okay. We see the cursor in the middle rotating, waiting while it's filling the buffer. Once the buffer's filled, it will start playing out. It uses the buffer to take care of, of packet loss and latency that it sees over the internet. You see that even though I started the GeoLink first, the O3B1 has started sooner. No surprise there, given what we know about latency. The real story though, I mean, and you see that, that O3B is playing out continuously on the video with no gaps. What we see over the geo link though is about every 10 seconds it stops and rebuffers. Right? Why is this happening? Well this is an HD quality video and it's playing out faster than it can download the video. Right? So TCP is limiting how fast it can download, the flash can download this video and it's trying to play it out faster than it can download it. So every 10 seconds it stops and it rebuffers. Whereas the O3B1 will play out continuously. Obviously, this has a huge impact on the user satisfaction. Over a GeoLink, this is almost unwatchable, and you can imagine that many people would give up after a few minutes. Whereas over O3B, they'll watch it continuously. Now, this is a fixed rate flash. So, the second demonstration I'm going to do is over YouTube. Now, YouTube is a lot more intelligent, it uses a variable data rate for its flash. It will detect the data rate, the speed that that user has, and it will adjust the video quality to match that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, this is an HD trailer. It's The Hobbit, one of my, uh, one of my favorite movies. And what happens is now, this is an HD trailer, so once again the data rate is higher than can be supported over Geo, right, on the full HD. So instead of stopping and rebuffering, YouTube will actually downspeed, it would reduce the quality so that the data rate of the link is less and it plays out continuously for the user. Now, this improves the quality, certainly over stopping and starting the, the video, but now you, you've lost the quality. You're not able to, to stream HD quality video in real time over the GeoLink, but over O3B you can. You can see the, the quality difference here in the, the level of detail, right? Look in the back and the carpet here. You can see that there's much more detail on the HD than there is on the SD, right? This is becoming more and more important because much more video now is coming to us over the internet than over traditional broadcast mediums. So this is going to be more and more important. So the service that I believe is benefits most from low latency is voice, right? And the reason for this is a casual subscriber on a mobile network can hear the difference in the latency. You don't need sophisticated tests to, to do that. Um, the ITU has a model that, sh that shows you the impact of mouth to ear delay on the quality of the service. And you can see that up to about 200 milliseconds, 
People don't perceive that there's a difference in quality, perceives that it's instantaneous. At that point, the delay increases and people perceive that the quality is dropping, right? The longer it gets, we start getting echo, people start talking over each other, and our quality of, of experience starts dropping. So what I'm going to do is I have three phones here. I have one connected to Geo, one connected to O3B, and then one that's just connected to the, the terrestrial network. So I'm going to call from the Geo phone to the terrestrial. Okay. And the easiest way to, to hear it is to put them all up. One, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven. You can hear that there's an echo on the line, right? And that delay means that during pauses in the conversation, the person on the other line thinks you've stopped. Actually, you've just taken a breath and he starts talking. People start talking over each other and the conversation becomes very unnatural. We're going to do the same thing over O3B. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can hear that the audio is much more in sync, right? And what that does is it leads to a much more natural conversation. And there are studies have shown that people actually call more and stay on the call longer. And this provides more revenue for the mobile operators. So why does latency matter? We've shown that it improves the, the speed of transitions, resulting in higher data rates, faster downloads. It improves the interactivity of services, keeping users more engaged in what they're doing online. It improves the quality of voice services, leading to higher satisfaction, longer calls. Overall, you put these all together, it results in more satisfied customers. For the operator, more satisfied customers means lower churn, means that they're more likely to recommend the service to their friends, and you'll, you'll get higher market share. Hopefully, I've been able to show you, demonstrate to you today, why, the value, why O3B's low latency brings value to operators. Thank you very much.